Bella was regular? Oh, wait a minute, Jim. Darn it, I should have cashed a check. Okay, how far can I get on a dollar and a half's worth? How far are you going? Van Nuys? Should be okay. Yeah, doing a Barnaby Jones. In Van Nuys? Well, I play the uh, cashier at a movie theater. I'm the first victim. Ah, sounds good. Anything in it for a uh, Robert Redford type, who also sings and dances, and just did a big commercial? Oh, yeah, that's great. When's it coming out? Uh, sometime next month. Money, money. I'll watch for it. Hey, Davidson's Furniture Outlet. I'm on test of the waterbed. exactly what happened and I want you to tell us just in your own words now there's a lot of noise out here so please speak up I still can't believe it I mean there was this blue van and it just came after me that's all for no reason what do you mean came after you well I, I, I wanted to 
get off down at the Van Nuys Boulevard exit, and uh, I'm doing this Barnaby Jones, and I had an 8 o'clock call. Anyway, I, I tried to get off at the exit, and this van cut me off. I cut in front of him, and, and he went crazy. I mean, I've never seen anybody drive like that before. And uh, anyway, I, he, he cut me off at the exit, and then he ran me off the road. He was trying to kill me. I know he was. I mean, one of those officers over there, he said that if I hadn't hit at an angle, I would have been dead. What makes you think he was trying to kill you? Well, it was the way he drove. I mean, nobody's ever driven like that. It's like, like some kind of a wild animal after you. Well, it was a car. Thank you, Becky. This is Ace Durham on the Ventura Freeway. <laughs> Thanks, Paul. You can kill him. <laughs> oh, Ace, you're so sweet. I believed her. I don't know. Did you talk to any witnesses? A couple. They weren't much help. Uh, they both said that uh, both cars were driving erratically. She says you had to have been there. Oh, come on, Ace. The girl's in show business. That's probably the biggest piece of film she's ever done in her life. You know, she wasn't too shook up to mention her part in Barnaby Jones. But what if she's right? But uh, what if she's single? <laughs> oh. Get her phone number, Ace. All right. All right. <laughs> you have all the fun. <laughs> Again. Hmm. You know, on that uh, dog napping spot last night, I thought your lipstick was just a tad obvious. Just a little lip gloss. It'll be fine. Oh, I hope you don't mind a suggestion from a lady who's been around the corner a couple of times. No. No, I don't. Thank you, Rosemary. Ciao. Ciao. Pauline? Yes. Who's this? Jane Clausen. Oh. Jen Jeffries. Oh, Jan. Hi. When are you going to come back and see us? Oh, sometime soon. Ray around? Sure, I think so. He's previewing some film for a six o'clock newscast. I'll ring for Thanks. you. Yep. Ray, your wife? Question mark? Jan? You guys getting back together again, or what? Well, uh, look who called who. Put her on. Hello, Ray? Jan, you're not going to believe this. Now, I was just going to call you. I've got Murray flying in with a bucket full of cherry stone steamers, two glasses, and a bottle of tequila on ice. I thought we'd stay on the boat tonight, and then we'd sail over to Catalina in the morning. I'll pick you up at 8, all right? I can't tonight. They want me to do the dog napping thing again at 11. That's terrific. I I've got to stay here and do the news myself. I'll pick you up at 12. I can't, okay? Sure you can. Ray, it's too soon. Too soon? I, I've been waiting for three months. Besides, I miss you, and, and I don't want to see cherry stones go to waste. They won't go to waste. Look, you, you call me. What is it? Yeah. Uh, remember the automobile special we did for the network? Yeah, I, I remember. What about it? Do you still have that film? Oh, I'm sure we do. You want to run it? Could I? I want to see if I'm right about something. It's no accident, I think, that the women's liberation movement started in this country where the automobile is so accessible. The fact is, the family car has given women the mobility to act on their goals. Dr. Glass, don't you find that rather ungrateful of you? No, I don't think so. There you have it, Ray Jeffries, on location in Los Angeles, KTNS News. Hello. Thank you for sending the film over. I didn't expect you. You wearing eyeshadow? A little. You never used to wear eyeshadow. I never used to be in front of a camera. You find what you're looking for? It's a little further along, I think. How are the clams? I'll never tell. <laughs> that the automobile offers an acceptable avenue for otherwise pent-up hostilities. But there is evidence that this hostility is on the rise. Yeah, you look fine, Jan. Just terrific. Single life must agree with you. I feel terrific. Then have dinner with me. We're still married. 
I miss you, Jan. I love you. Why does that sound to me as if you're mainly just trying to maneuver me back into the house again? Haven't I left you alone for three months? Completely alone? It wasn't easy. No, it wasn't. The, uh, snapper's fresh at Antoine's. Let me think about it. Sure, as long as you say yes. In the words of Patrolman Cassidy, we used to have highway courtesy. Today, we have highway rudeness. Consider the experience of a Southern California tennis pro on what is probably the nation's most sophisticated freeway system. This is it. I was heading north on the Hollywood Freeway, and I realized that I had missed the exit I wanted. I was heading back to the club here. There was this uh, black van in the lane next to me. So I cut in front of him. You gotta cut in front of somebody if you wanna get off the freeway. So I, I cut in front of him, and the next thing I know, all of a sudden, this van is pushing me from behind so fast that I missed the Victory Boulevard exit. And then he came up alongside me, and he uh, pushed me off the freeway, just forced me off the freeway. And my car turned over once, and I was lucky I wasn't killed. And I'm sure that's what he was trying to do, only because I tried to uh, cut in front of him. And it wasn't as if I didn't signal in time. I mean, I, n I never saw anybody drive like that, uh, like some kind of a demon. And, you know, I couldn't see him, but I, I knew he hated me. Hated me for no reason at all. Thanks, Paul. You can take it down. I'm finished. Thanks a lot. You still have your name and address on the files, don't you? Yes, yeah, learn something, enough. That's all this about, anyway. Becky are the only two I ever heard of who actually felt the other car was trying to kill her. Believe me, with that maniac, you know, without a doubt in the world. I have never been so scared in my life. And I've been through major surgery twice. But you couldn't see him at all? No. Not even a little bit? Not worth a damn. But if he was as close as you say, I wonder why you couldn't see him. I don't know. I think maybe he had... Uh, the kind of glass you can't see through. I mean, it was dark. I really couldn't see inside at all. It was night? No, no, the glass was dark. One way glass. Maybe so. Miss Clarkson, we appreciate your interest. But I think we're talking about two separate incidents that have no connection. Lieutenant Haller, I called Becky. They both said positively that van had one-way glass. But Lynn Bernheimer told the investigating officer the van was black. But look at the way the two attacks happened. Uh, attacks, attacks is your word, not ours. In both instances, then, okay? Mm. The women were trying to get off the freeway, pulled in front of the van. Uh, a, a van. All right. A van, then proceeded to prevent them from taking the off-ramp they were headed for, and then went on to force them both off the road. Well, that's what those two ladies said. We have witnesses who aren't so sure. And remember that Lynn Bernheimer's accident happened almost six months ago. I mean, her memory has to be hazy now. And Miss Lyons is, uh, she's an actress. Oh, wait, but it happened. I mean, it did happen. That's a matter of record. Something happened, I grant you that. What about the way the two women felt? They both felt the same way, and they both talked about the attack the same way. The way he drove, there was something so frightening about the way he drove. And they both said the same thing. They were both absolutely certain that this man was trying to kill them. Doesn't that count for anything? Not for much, I'm afraid. We cannot investigate a feeling. So does that mean you're just going to ignore the whole thing? We're not going to ignore anything, Miss Clausen. Nothing. All right, Lieutenant. What are you going to do about it? You used to be, um news writer for KTNN. Yes. Well, then this job here must represent a big step forward for you. Now, look, I can understand you're looking for a hot story that'll help you along in a new situation. I can understand that, but believe me, this is not it. Is that what you think I'm trying to do? Look, I don't think what she's saying is so far-fetched. I mean, I was there, I talked to Becky Lyons. I'm not going to get into this with you. You know, it used to be that you people just reported the news and were content to let other people make it. Well, let's just keep it that way, shall we?
we going to have our first date, Mr. Frisch? What about your husband? Well, he's a flight engineer. He'll never know. So how long have you been married? Three years. And tomorrow's our anniversary. How about that? Oh, congratulations. You're going to celebrate? I'm going to meet my old man at the airport in about 45 minutes, and we're going to drive to Vegas. Good for you. You should see the sexy blouse I'm going to wear. If I get arrested on the freeway, you'll know why. Stop torturing an old man. Have a good time. I'll bring you a silver dollar. Lord, she's in terrible pain. Look, if she doesn't want to talk now, that's fine. No, she wants to talk to you. She says that if you might know who did this to her, then she'll talk to you for damn sure. Thank you. It shouldn't take long. It can't. She's burned over 60% of her body. Miss Glossman, come back a little later. No. 
No. Because I won't be here. I want to put away. Honey, don't talk like that. Of course you're going to be here. If you think I'm going to let you get away from me, you're crazy. Andy, I've seen enough burn cases. I know ones that don't make it. Definitely had the one-way glass. Oh, yeah. Music. Did I say about the music? Music? What kind of music? Mrs. Custon, where was the music coming from? The van. It was country. A fiddler. It's a crazy kind. It sounded like he was getting off. My God, how sick can one creep get? Honey, honey, I'll be right outside. Wait a minute, Lynn. This latest girl says she heard him playing music when he attacked her. It must have been coming from his stereo if she could hear it. It was country music with a weird kind of fiddle thing. Do you remember hearing anything like that? Did you say music? No, honey, I... Country music with a weird kind of fiddle thing. No, I, I don't think there was any music. I, I, I just don't remember any music. I'll be right there. Listen, honey, can I call you right back? I got some really important people here from San Diego. Listen, Lynn, it's very important because if either you or Becky heard anything like that, then maybe the police would sit up and take notice. Yeah, well, look, if I think of anything, I'll call you back, I promise. I really gotta go now, okay? Bye-bye. Dr. Glenda Grant wanted in surgery. Dr. Glenda Grant wanted in surgery. Hi, this is Jan Claus. This is Becky Lyon. I'm out of the but if you leave your name and number with a beep sound, I'll call you back just as soon as possible. Becky, this is Jan Clausen from KXLA News. My number is 555-9807. Please call me the minute you get in. Thank you. I'm going to say it. You're just too damn nice. The women who make it this business are first-class barracudas, and you know what I'm talking about. You're either going to get hurt because you're not one of them, or you're going to have to become one of them to keep from getting hurt. Just because Lynn and Becky didn't hear the music doesn't mean he wasn't playing it. Jen, I just hate to see you pulling at scraps like this. What are you trying to prove? That I can make it on my own that I can stand on my own two feet and amount to something without you holding me up. You're just so serious. Why are you so serious about it? I tell you what let's do. We'll go back to the house and I'll make a couple of tequila sunrises. We'll jump in the jacuzzi. I'll, I'll even heat up the, the water bed. How's that? You see that? 
You see that? Oh, let's see what? You see what just happened? Well, what just happened? You never listen to me. Oh, I'm, I'm listening. I'm listening. <laughs> I'm listening. Could you get serious just for one moment? All right, get serious. I know I owe you everything. I know that. Well, I know not that. really. No. You gave me the job at KTNS right out of college. You taught me. You coached me. It's because I love you. Sometimes I felt like I just couldn't get a breath. I realize, I realize, I'm in therapy now. I mean, I just don't understand what the big deal is. I mean, why can't we just see each other? What's the big deal? Well, then, what's the big deal if we don't? Thank you for dinner. It's just too soon. Not enough has happened for me. Well, what's supposed to happen? This jerk on the freeway with the killer van? Super Skirt's gonna bring him in single-handedly? Jan, wake up, will you? I mean, you're just a news reporter and agreeing with that. Uh, just kidding. No problem. <laughs> um, just, baby, I... just don't want to see you get hurt, that's all. I would like to go in now. Sure, okay. Beat me to the draw. Good night, Ray. Let's not let the evening in like this. Hello? Jan? Listen, I'm sorry if I sounded brusque or rude today, but there are these people from San Diego, and they're breathing down my neck, and they have this big turnover of $100,000 in prizes, and it means a lot to me, but it's all settled. Well, congratulations. Oh, yeah. Anyway, listen, I've had a chance to think about it. And you know, uh... There was some kind of music. Some, uh, bluegrass kind of stuff. I, I just didn't associate it with a van. I, it, it, I couldn't make any kind of connection. I mean, it's so weird. Man, this is terrific. Can you hang on a second? Yeah. Ray? That huh? was Lynn Bernheimer. She heard the music. How oh, terrific. Why did you let Lieutenant Haller know? It's one for you. Tensions in the Middle East may be nearing the breaking point, and a major tragedy at the Los Angeles International Airport is averted. Also, find out why it may not be safe for women to travel on the Southlands freeways alone. But Jeanette Clausen joins me and the rest of the KXLA news team at 6 o'clock. Well, we stuck our necks out this far. When, uh, when did Haller say he'd call? He said he'd call at 5. Would you not worry? Who's Don't worried? Don't worry. Uh. Promise is the exclusive. Jan, hold it. Jerry, give me KTNS on monitor three down here. You better take a look at this, Jan. The fiddler, so dubbed because of his habit of playing wild fiddle music in the course of his attacks, appears to choose as his victims women traveling alone on the freeway. Remember, when it happens, you'll hear it first on KTNS. Jan, Lieutenant Haller was quoted as the source on that story. That was my story. Call for Jan Clausen on 47. Call for Jan Clausen. Pick up 47. Hello, this is Jan Clausen. Yeah, I suppose you've, uh, I suppose you've seen it. I'm sorry. Uh, I didn't know, believe me. I didn't get into the studio until about 15 minutes ago. Lieutenant Harrington, he's in liaison. He owes me some favors from way back. He called the station just as a matter of routine and didn't talk to me. He talked to someone else. I'm sorry. It just uh, goes to prove what I was telling you. It's a killer business, Jan. You're not mean enough. Well, why should you break your heart? Let me make it up to you. <laughs>
Tell me your name and what happened. Trevina Man. Well, I was trying to get away from the freeway fiddler when he forced me off the road and caused all of this. Then that highway patrolman gives me a ticket for speeding and let the fiddler get away. I can understand your frustration, Miss Manson. Thank you for talking with me. So the fiddler got away again. And now two more women are dead. However, authorities are saying they may have a break in the case, as several witnesses have described the by now familiar blue van as being equipped with blue and yellow California license plates, possibly containing the letters P and E. This is Jeanette Clausen for KXLA from the scene of the Freeway Fiddler's latest attack. And not at all anxious to leave the scene, horrible as it is. Because when I do, I'm going to be, like thousands of other women, in a car on Los Angeles' 491 miles of freeway, all alone. Please calm down. If you just give me a minute, I'll try to answer your questions. Thank you. Now, the police department, the sheriff's department, and the highway patrol have formed a special fiddler task force. It'll be under my personal direction. And I want to give you my assurance that every effort is being made to see this man is caught and arrested and prosecuted. Do you have any real leads yet, Lieutenant? Well, we have a witness who says the, the fiddler may wear a beard, may have a, a funny cap of some kind on his head. Excuse me, would that witness be Tarina Mance? No, no, it would not. But Tarina Mance was a witness. Well, there was a witness who described an earlier freeway incident in which the description of the van matched that of the fiddlers. Fortunately, she wasn't harmed, and uh, of course, we're looking into that now. Isn't it true that Tarina Mance was being attacked by the fiddler when she was stopped by a highway patrolman who not only let the fiddler get away, but insisted on citing her for speeding? Well, I don't have any information on that, but if the lady was stopped for speeding, she probably was speeding. Unfortunately, we don't have enough men to be everywhere at once. Now, but, if that's all the questions, thank you. But why did the patrolman stop Tarina Mance instead of the van? Because he was more interested in a pretty woman alone in a sporty car? I resent that implication, Miss Clausen. These men are out here 24 hours a day doing the best job they possibly can. Now, if you want to see this job done, you'll let me do mine, and I thank you all for your cooperation. Excuse me. I'll see you guys back at the newsroom. Ben? Hi, Ben. Hi. What do you think? Among other things, I think that if you're going to be covering the fiddler, you're going to need Haller. Now, take it from an old hand who's probably been around too long. Let up on him a little. Right. Who is the freeway fiddler? Well, of course, no one knows yet. But tonight, we have at least an educated guess in answer to that question from Dr. Rita Glass, Chief of Psychiatric Services at Los Angeles General Hospital and a frequent consultant in police matters. Thank you for being with us tonight, Doctor. What can you tell us about the fiddler? Well, Jan, of course, I don't know any more about what the fiddler looks like than anyone else, but what I can offer tonight is a sort of psychological profile based on what we already know about the killer. Let's take the attacks themselves. We already know that the victims are all women uh, traveling the freeway alone. We also know that they were all reasonably attractive. And there is strong evidence to suggest that in each case, the driver of the car performed some sort of maneuver, which was perceived by the killer as an act of aggression, causing the, the killer to say, in effect, hey, you women are just getting too big for your britches. Judging from what you just said, then, what can we theorize about the fiddler's psychological profile? We can feel that he is uh, a severely repressed personality, easily threatened, unsure of his masculinity, that he, he may have been dominated as a child by his mother or, or some other female authority figures, uh, that he is uh, emotionally stunted, and in a very deep sense feels like a child. I would also have to guess that he has a strong death wish, a need to be hurt or killed, perhaps as a punishment for being such a bad boy. 
After all, he cannot attack these women in such a way without placing himself in, in, in extreme danger. Thank you, Doctor. Drawing on the doctor's profile, then, we can make the following suggestions to women. Don't travel the freeway unless absolutely necessary, and don't travel alone. And if you do find yourself on the freeway, drive defensively, particularly if there is a van in the area. Remember, the freeway fiddler has killed nine women and will almost surely kill again. anywhere. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> I think he got away. Yeah, I think he got away. But you know what? That's a lot more difficult than it really looks. But with the proper training, almost anybody can do it. That's why the other night I was watching on television and you were talking to the ladies about how to get away from the fiddler and I said, I might as well call her and tell her to come down and see what my school's all about. Well, I'm glad you did because I just never saw anything like it before in my life. How long is your course? Oh, it depends. Uh, I think with somebody like you, I'd probably put you through the anti-terrorist course, uh, the anti-kidnapping. We'd modify it maybe a little bit to suit your specifics. And, uh, oh, four or five days, four or five hours a day, something like that. Oh, that's not long at all. No. Uh... Well, I'll tell you what. Now I have to ask my producer. But I think the thing to do is for me to take the course myself. I think you're right. Yeah, well, can we have a crew come along and film it? Sure, why not? Terrific! Right. You're on! Okay, lady, come on. And recognize these? You hear them almost every day. You can be king of the road in a new road rocket. One side slaves, it's the king. The legendary Bengal tiger is known for its fierce attack. That's why we named our new eight-cylinder renegade after it. See the new tiger at your Southern California dealers today. Or this. Five on the floor, rack and pinion steering, zero to 60 in four seconds. That's the stuff the new Python 620 is made of. And ladies and gentlemen, I venture to say, that's the stuff the Freeway Fiddler is made of. This is Jeanette Clausen, KXLA News. going to learn this? <sighs> you may, but my heart's going to kill me. No, you're doing fine. You know, remember, today's your first day. You're doing terrific. You think? Yeah. Mm. Excuse me. Hang on. Okay. Well, today I learned something called the bootlegger's turnaround. Sort of. Tomorrow, it's defensive evasion. Whatever that is. This is Jeanette Clausen, KXLA News. Teddy's flu has come back. He's in the nurse's office right now, and his temperature is 101. Oh, dear. Thanks for calling, Mrs. Reisman. I'll come and pick him up. You know, he seemed just fine this morning. The minute you think that bug is gone, it's back again. Well, I guess that's the way this flu is. Will you tell Teddy I'll get there as fast as I can? Thanks.
Lieutenant, he seems to be able to kill and escape at will. Even when the police are there. All right, one at a time, one at a time, please. We are going to catch the fiddler, I promise you that. Has there been any progress, Lieutenant? Any real progress? Are you any closer to catching this man than before? Well, we're presently checking out a couple of reports in the Sunland Tahonga area of a van answering the description of the one last used by the fiddler. What have you got, Lieutenant, really? You know, I'd like to say that the public can play an important role in cases like this, especially in a, in a preventive sense. What do you mean by that, Lieutenant? Well, women especially can help by not making themselves candidates for the fiddler. You might be interested to know that between them, the victims have accumulated ten moving violations in the last three years. Lieutenant. And one of them, Becky Lyons, has had her license suspended on at least one occasion. Lieutenant, are you saying that it was somehow these women's fault that they were attacked by the fiddler? What I'm saying is we have a situation where women must be aware of their actions. It sounds to me as if you failed to catch the fiddler. So you've decided to shift the blame to the victims. Oh, no, I don't think that's it at all, Miss Claude. Well, sure it is. Isn't that what you're doing? What are you saying to me, that the victims were, were 100% blameless in all cases? Is that what you're saying? How can you pursue this case effectively if you feel this way? Well, I can pursue you're it effectively. You're talking about 10 you... violations in three years? There have been 12 victims. That's not even one violation apiece. That's nothing. No, it's not nothing. It's something. Because nine of those women are dead. Excuse me. like everybody else. Oh, thank you. Um, I'll get a mix, okay? Long dominant in the field, KTNS's News at Six, anchored by veteran Ray Jeffries, was nudged out of first place in the ratings for the first time this week by KXLA's Evening News Beat. Producer Ralph Candler attributes the show's newfound success to, quote, a number of factors, but the mail indicates that the Fiddler follow-up with Jeanette Clausen has consistently attracted a large audience. Clausen coincidentally split from hubby's bed and board four months ago for solo career. How sweet it is, right, Jan? I'm sorry about the last bit. It was totally unnecessary. Thank you for the flowers. That was very sweet. Well... You are the girl of the hour now, aren't you? For now. You know. Well, it's all very nice. But I think it's kind of risky, don't you? You're making a crusade out of this whole thing. Have you noticed how many crimes there are committed against women these days? It's like we're trying to do more for ourselves and there are just some men who are determined to punish us for it jan this guy's crazy <laughs> i know that don't you suppose he knows you by now don't you suppose he's watching i've thought of that well, you're just his kind of girl i mean you're made to order i think he's probably lapping up the attention 
Jan, there's no telling what a maniac like this can do. And you're on the tube every night telling the whole world he's some sort of infantile creep who's not even sure he's a man. You're just asking for it, Jan. It's part of the job. There are other jobs. I see. No, I don't think you do, Jan. Ray, good reporters stick their necks out all the time. You know that. It goes with the territory. And it isn't as if I weren't taking precautions. Ray, thank you for the flowers. Nothing. It was very sweet. Um, um, I'm kind of busy right now. I'm trying to make this house livable. Take a guy with you if you drive. Don't drive alone. I said that in my editorial. Oh, yeah, you did, you did, didn't you? Well, then, take your own advice. Just promise me you, you'll take precautions. And if you need me, night or day. Taking precautions, huh? Yes. You forgot to draw your drapes. They're supposed to be able to spell before they can write. Have you got a moment? Yeah. Yeah, I've got five minutes. By the way, I suppose I should congratulate you, except I am, I am not so sure I like the sensation of your warm breath down my heel. Oh, well, if now is a bad time, I... No, no, no. Well, it's obvious they haven't told you. Told me? What? I'm about to take a vacation for two weeks, and you have been mentioned as my replacement for the six o'clock news. I'm going to go straight to Arizona to a spa, and I'm going to find the fountain of youth. I don't think you have that much to worry about. But you've got a lot to think about, haven't you? Yes. I guess that's what I wanted to talk to you about. Go ahead. This is the first time that I've done this, just decided to go after something. And I'm finding out there's a price to be paid. I could get hurt. I could get hurt very easily. And on the other hand, I may hurt other people. Not may. You will. When you start to move ahead, you, you bump into other people. Sometimes it's your shins. Sometimes it's the other guys. It gets kind of lonely, doesn't it? So, what do you want from me? Well, I just wondered if there was ever a time when you felt like giving it up. Or maybe just staying with a man. Jan, what do you want from me? Encouragement? Never mind. No, no, sit down. Sit down. Jan, nobody else can tell you what to do. That has to be your choice. But I can tell you one thing. You are never, ever going to make it with anyone else until you can make it alone. And what about you? I mean, do you have anybody else? <laughs> that, my dear girl, is none of your business. Two minutes, Rosemary. Thank you.
okay, lady? Yeah, I'm just mad I did it wrong, that's all. Because if you'd really been after me, I'd be dead. Let me tell you what you did right, though. You used the tree to separate me from you, that's good. Came down here in the dirt where it's easy to turn, that's good. You were just a little bit nervous because I was sitting about that far from your bumper. Tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to meet you back at school and we'll try it all over again. I'm with you. Kid. Terrific. What do you got? Uh, Fiddler editorial? Yep. You're going to love it. I can't wait for you to see this. Terrific. When you're hot, you're hot. That's right. Jan, listen, I, uh, wait, 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 let me talk to you for a minute, okay? Yeah, what's up? Uh, I was with the, the bigwigs this morning, and, uh, and there's some talk about taking you off of the Fiddler follow-up. What? They haven't what? come right out and Are said anything directly me? to me, but what? they're hinting at it. We're doing so well. What's happened is that half of Detroit has withdrawn their car advertising from KXLA, and we're facing a couple of sizable lawsuits. So let them. And they resent your implications that they're responsible for the fiddler. Well, in a way, they are. And I got a call from Lieutenant Haller's office, and uh, they've asked us to send somebody else out on the next news conference. Does that mean I'm barred from the police? It means you're barred from Lieutenant Haller, and he is in, in charge of the, the whole fiddler thing. Okay. <clears throat> so we send somebody else to hold the microphones. <clears throat> Ralph, don't take me off this. Please. No. Please don't take me off no, this. No, 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 I'm not. Please. I'm not going to take you off of it. Not now, not yet. And as far as I'm concerned, they're, they're wrong about the whole thing, and we're right. I'm telling you all this because I want you to be aware, Jan, of everything that's going on now. And if the front office does come to me, and in fact, tell me, there's not much I can do, Jan. Hmm? Yeah. What about Rosemary? What does she say? Well, Rosemary feels like you, like me, but we're all in the same boat. All right? Okay? Finish. Finish. You're Finish. not finished yet. It's taking you so long. Don't move on. That's a cut. That's a cut. Very nice. Hey, what time is this going to be on? I want to be sure I have my friends watch. Tonight, right before my editorial. I'll watch it. Do. Should you I? should. You should. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very You're much. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. How about lunch? Uh, all right. I think you should resign. Voluntarily. But it's only a matter of time before the network says you're fired. That's a black mark on your record. You probably won't get another job. Thank you. I appreciate your coming out to see me. I appreciate your taking the time to talk to me like this. It's just a habit. I like to think. It's not a bad one. It just means too much to me. I can't just quit. Neither can the fiddler, most likely. So you're putting yourself in physical danger for a job your employers don't even want you to do in the first place. But I haven't done anything wrong. Have I? Have I done anything wrong? No. Just some things that some people don't like. Well, they want me out, they're going to have to throw me out. Let me talk now. I have a hunch you could have your old job back working with me if you wanted. As a news writer? You're a damn good one. I'm not such a terrible reporter either. So they tell me. Jan, face facts, forget it, will you? Chances are you're unemployable now. Let me call Cal. You were a good team once. What you're saying is, I can't make it without you. Is that right? All right, let's face the facts. You've been out on your own now for four months. You've destroyed what little career you had. That's really what this whole thing has been about, isn't it? I'm too nice, 
They're worried about me. I should get off the story for my health. Ha! Huh. You are scared to death. I might just make it on my own. Aren't you? No. Because I know you can't. You need me. I'm good for you. Who started you in this business anyway? Jan? Jan? Jan, I, I don't like you leaving upset like this. Once I get away from you, I won't be upset. to the contrary, the freeway carnage you have just seen was not the work of the freeway fiddler. In fact, all these accidents took place before we ever heard of an unbalanced, homicidal speed freak called the freeway fiddler. Because without any help from the fiddler at all, we managed to kill 50,000 Americans on our roads and freeways every year. Over two million Americans have died in automobile accidents. That's almost twice the number of men killed in all the wars the United States has ever fought. Perhaps the most surprising thing about the Fiddler phenomenon is that it hasn't happened long before this. Consider that every driver has a lethal weapon placed in his hands, and then consider that he is actually encouraged through advertising and the entertainment media to use this weapon in a dangerous and irresponsible way. And if the driver is male, he may even be persuaded that his very masculinity depends on how fast he can drive or how many chances he is willing to take with his life or the lives of others. Is it really necessary for the automobile manufacturers to glamorize speed and recklessness in their advertising and to manufacture cars capable of speeds in excess of a hundred miles an hour? Unless the industry that makes the cars and the public that buys them begin to assume some responsibility for the lethal potential of this family servant we call the automobile the murderer known as the Freeway Fiddler may well be only the first of his kind. This is Jeanette Clausen, KXLA News. I talked to Cow. He's delighted to have you back. Oh. I don't know. Well, Jan, you're unemployable anywhere else. I've checked. Fortunately, I still have some leverage around the town. All Cal wants is a two-minute chat with you. He just wants to make sure the ducks are in a row, that, uh, that your act's together. Everything's going to be fine. I appreciate it, but... Uh, Jan, we're going to be a team again. You report Monday morning. Meanwhile, I thought we'd stay at your place tonight, and over the weekend, we'll move your clothes back into the house. I don't think so. All right, what now? Well, actually, I have plans for tonight. Well, can't you cancel your plans? I don't know if I can, or if I want to. Now, Jan, you're not going to start that again, are you? I mean, you found out the hard way, haven't you, that you can't, you can't make it alone, that you need me? What I need is some time to think. You want time? You got it. Time's up. Come on, Kyle's waiting. Call for Jan Clausen. 
call for Jan Claus? Or... All right, you answer the phone. I'll go get the car. Just hurry it up. Cal's waiting. Can I use your phone? Sure, you Thank you. Hello? 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 Who is this? Is this Jeanette Clausen? Yes. Who am I speaking to, please? You don't know me. My name is Bobby Hill. We got a club called the Street Phantoms. Yes. Oh, we saw you talk last night on TV. Yes. Well, you should come down here, look around, you know. We might be able to help you. In what way, Mr. Hill? Hello? Hello? Want to catch the fiddler, right? Well, I'd like to see him caught, of course. Why? Well, then you should come down here and look around. Are you telling me that you know who the fiddler is? Maybe. You coming? Before I come down there, can you tell me a little more? No, I can't because it's not me. Look, lady, it, it's a friend. He's pretty sure he knows who the fiddler is. Why haven't you given this information to the police? Because they'll just want to know why we didn't say nothing before this. Well, why didn't you? Hello? Hello? Are you there? Hello? So you coming down or what? Yes. I am. Mr. Hill, where are you located? You know where Roy's muffler and radiator shop is. 1919 Curtis Boulevard. We're next door, 1921. Sunland, right near Tohunga. Are you going to be there for a while? Yeah, we'll be here. You coming? I'm on my way. You ready? Let's go. I'm not going with you. What do you mean you're not going with me? Cal's waiting. What the hell's going on? What was all that about, anyway? Jan, would you just stop and talk to me? Cal's waiting. I don't want the job. You want time to think about it? Take time. I don't want the job now, or any other time. What the hell was that phone call anyway? That's none of your business. Look, I went out on a limb for you. I took a big risk. You can't just walk out on me like this. I can do anything I want.
You're Jeanette Lawson. Yes. Yeah, I'm Bobby. This here is Maury. Hello, Maury. I seen you on TV. You want to take a look around? This is our shop. It's where we all get together. All these cars? Well, yeah, that's the thing. I mean, that's what kind of club it is. It's a car club. You know, we don't want to kill nobody. You know, we got a franchise. I mean, the city gave us a certificate. I mean, the cops come down here. They talk to us. They joke. I mean, they know all of us. Sometimes they come down and watch the races. You want a soda or anything? No, no. Thank you just the same. I'm fine. I'm fine. Well, you see, we don't want to kill nobody. I mean, you can see that. But what you said on TV, you know? I mean, you shouldn't criticize things you don't know nothing about. You know what I mean? I think so. I think I know what you're saying. Yes. You did say something about the fiddler. Yeah, yeah. See those guys, like the fiddler? He couldn't be in our club. I mean, this is a social club. I mean, you see these guys? They're all friends of each other. They got those guys, like the fiddler. See, they, they keep by themselves, you know? I mean, we call them roaches. Roaches? Yeah. See, they keep pretty much to themselves. I mean, they don't party, they don't, uh... I mean, they don't like, uh, girls. Huh? It's just their ride. I mean, everything. Everything they do. It's their ride. I mean, they don't have no friends, you know? So don't say that the fiddler could come from a club like this, because he couldn't. I don't think I said anything like that. I'm sorry if you mistook me. He used to park his ride out by the junkyard. He'd come and stand around like a kid, trying to get in the game, you know? Morris is the only one that remembers him. I mean, I don't even remember him. John. John something. What did he look like? Hey, he looked like everybody else. He was a guy. Well, what makes you think this John something was the fiddler? What he'd do a lot was he'd park his ride out by the junkyard. And he'd just sit there. He'd sit there and play music. Fiddle music. Bluegrass, country, that kind of thing? Yeah. I hate that garbage. His, uh, ride. What kind of a ride did he have? It's like they said, a van. What color? Black. How long ago was this? Hey, I don't know. It was a long time ago, all right? Almost a year. Look, nobody liked the guy. Talk to Eddie. He's working on his ride out back, okay? Yeah. Roach used to come by every once in a while, talk to him. And he's got a big scar on the side of his face. He used to be a driver. John someone. 
Maury told me about him. He said he used to hang around here about a year or so ago. He drove a black van. He played a lot of country music. You're the gal on TV, aren't you? I'm Janet Clausen, yeah. We talk a lot. Just wait here. Is there a John Evans living here? My name is Jeanette Clausen. Oh, the girl on television. I think you've added so much to the news over there. Thank you very much. My name's Helen Shield. Hello. Mr. Evans could be back for his things today, but he moved out on Tuesday. Do you know where he's gone? No, he didn't say. My guess is he's living in his van like he did before he came here. His van? The fiddler. He drove a van. You wouldn't happen to know what his van looked like, would you? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm blind four years now. Well, like I say, he might come around later on. Do you think that I could look in his room? Oh, my goodness. I'd just like to look around for just a, just a minute. Yes, yes, of course. Here's the key. The room's right over there. Did he ever play any music in his room? Uh, never that I heard. Of course, he was hardly ever here. He was always off in that van of his. I used to wonder why he bothered with the room at all. Thank you very much. I'll bring this right back to you. Oh, my Lord.
Sergeant Greenberg. Lieutenant Haller, please. Miss Clawson, I owe you an apology. I ask one thing. No, no, don't you worry. The minute we have anything, you'll be the first to know. Thanks. Friends? Yes. Thank you. We'll see Bye. you later.